This podcast is sponsored by the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chamber of Commerce. The chamber is a catalyst for growth and prosperity and is here to protect and promote business, inspire innovation, cultivate communities, and influence action. Learn more at fmwfchamber.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to the Inform Business Beat podcast. This is your host, Thomas Avanella. We've got an interesting mix of news to catch you up on, plus I'll be discussing my latest story on a new business in downtown Fargo. Let's get things started. We'll start things off with Tammy Swift's story on Pride and Joy Rescue, located north of West Fargo. Pride and Joy Rescue is dedicated to saving local animals destined for slaughter. As Tammy details, these animals have typically been surrendered, abandoned, or neglected for reasons ranging from serious injury and age to owners who are moving, financially strapped, or simply no longer want them. Pride and Joy was founded by Connie and Roy Faulkner, though it was their daughter Rainey who provided the spark. Once Rainey learned what a slaughter truck was, she told her mother that she needed to save the animals. Now, Pride and Joy is the home of 20 horses, 17 goats, 5 dogs, several ponies, many chickens, one very talkative rooster, and numerous feral cats and kittens. For Tammy's full story, visit Inforum.com. Carrie Lorenz will deliver the keynote address at an upcoming Women Connect celebration. The event will take place at the Delta by Marriott and is hosted by the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chamber of Commerce. In advance of her remarks, Tammy had the chance to sit down with Lorenz to discuss her life. Ever since her youth in Green Bay, Lorenz wanted to be a pilot. It wasn't long until she realized, though, that there were not all that many female pilots out there. No problem. The undeterred Lorenz just went on to become the first female to fly the F-14 Tomcat, which travels twice the speed of sound and was featured in the movie Top Gun. Lorenz will deliver her message on winning under pressure from 3 to 5 p.m. on September 27th. Visit the Chamber website for more information and check out Tammy's full Q&A with Carrie on our website. National delivery company DoorDash will bring its unique take on a convenience store here to Fargo. The company plans to open a Dash Mart along 13th Avenue South in the near future. The Dash Mart will feature a wide variety of everyday items available for delivery or pickup. It will not be open to walking customers. Building permit records indicated the fit-up will cost $130,000. An exact opening date was not revealed. Johnny Carinos has abruptly closed. The South Fargo Italian restaurant announced its immediate closing Tuesday, September 13th via Facebook. The restaurant had been open for roughly 20 years. Gate City Bank received recognition for its support of employees in the National Guard and Reserves in a ceremony Wednesday, September 14th. The Fargo Bank received the Secretary of Defense Employee Support Freedom Award. Gate City Bank was one of only 15 employers across the nation to receive the recognition this year. Gate City Bank President and CEO Kevin Hansen said the company's impact is minor compared to what military members do every day. Hansen said that Gate City Bank is, quote, very proud to support them. Hi, everybody. I'm Chad Cool, host of the Northland Outdoors podcast. Hey, here in the Northland, we love our time outside. And on the Northland Outdoors podcast, we're going to talk about all of it. Not just fishing, not just hunting, but mountain biking, camping, rock climbing, bird watching, you name it. We're going to have it on the Northland Outdoors podcast. New episodes every two weeks on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. So look for it and join us on the Northland Outdoors podcast. Taking over hosting duties for me now will be Inforum digital producer Chris Kurzman. He's here to discuss my recent story about Ninja Skate and Versatile Outlets, a new skate shop in downtown Fargo. How you doing, Thomas? I'm doing good. It's fun to be on this side of the mic again. Yeah, you you uh, you play both sides of the mic pretty well. There's a sports analogy in there somewhere, right? Yeah, it's Offense somewhere in defense. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. So you, uh, uh, this latest story of yours, uh, you profiled uh, the store Ninja Skate, which recently opened in downtown Fargo. Just to start us off, why don't you tell us a little bit about the store itself? Right. Uh, as you said, Chris, Ninja Skate is the newest store in downtown Fargo. It's located at 413 Broadway across the street from Zambro's. They officially opened on August 22nd. And right away when you walk in, you get the impression that this store is small but mighty. You know, it's otherwise it's like the footprint of a studio apartment. But I mean, that place is packed full skateboards on the wall, clothes on the floor, on ra- not on the floor, on racks, clothes racked on the floor, collectible sneakers everywhere. 
it's really an interesting place. And like I said, small but mighty is the best way to describe it because it is every square foot in there is used. And it's got a very strong California theme. Uh, the owner, Angie Granheim, who we'll talk about, spent some time in California. And California is really the mecca for skateboarding. And Ninja Skate kind of conveys that. Yeah, Thomas, we actually have a little bit of, we can play some audio here. Our videographer, uh, Chris Flynn, actually visited uh, Ninja Skate earlier. Uh, let's listen to a little bit of that. My goal is to carry a small selection of skateboards, of completes. It's not going to be a large skate shop. All of our decks are Yokoher and Element, longboards custom made to order. For me, the streetwear is important. I want the streetwear. I want to bring a different vibe into the city, something that you can't walk into many other shops and find. And I think we've kind of nailed that here. The people. Yeah. So, um, so you mentioned something about the atmosphere in the store. Um, tell me about this West Coast theme and this West Coast vibe that's going on in there. Right. Like I said, our owner, Angie Granheim, she spent some time living in Los Angeles. And uh, if it wasn't for the fact that you could look outside and see snow flying and ice on the streets, you'd probably just think you had stumbled into one of the shops along the Venice Beach boardwalk in Los Angeles. Right away, you walk inside and you're greeted with the portraits of Nipsey Hussle and Mac Miller, two L.A. rap legends. The walls are all vividly painted with palm trees. Jackets on sale have Kobe Bryant, Snoop Dogg, you know, two of the biggest names in Los Angeles. And it's a really unique atmosphere for a store in Fargo. You don't really see anything like that. I'd go as far as to say it's a unique shopping experience and you couldn't really find anything else like it. Uh, and, and what kind of products uh, is Angie selling at Ninja Skate? It's uh, it says, you know, like it says on the on the tin, it's a skate shop, but it's not just skate stuff, right? Right. In fact, you would even maybe say that it's not as much of a shaped skate shop as much as it is an apparel shop. They do have the boards. The skateboards are from Element and Yokoher. Yokoher is an interesting small brand from California. Angie had actually worked with them when she lived in California. So carrying them in the store is now sort of a tribute to that. And they're complete skateboards, but she doesn't sell the individual parts like the trucks, the wheels or the bearings or the decks themselves. She kind of leaves that to the this skate shop that's also downtown. But really, the differentiating factor for Ninja Skate is that Angie has a really wide selection of apparel and streetwear. I kind of mentioned it before, but it's t-shirts, long sleeves, hats, jackets, you name it. And she's got a nice selection of collectible sneakers as well. So if you're looking to pick up a pair of Air Jordans, Yeezys, Gucci, Dior, any of those brands, stop in and Ninja Skate and... Yes, skateboarders do wear Gucci, she told us. <laughs> Before we hopped on for uh, this interview, I think you and I were comparing notes about um, about clothes and stuff and how uh, we're we're not we're not much of clothes fellas ourselves. But just looking at the uh, the racks and stuff from the photos in our story and from Chris's video, definitely a, a really in, like a really cool selection, like the kind of thing where you know, like, oh, you know, maybe I could pull off a pair of those sneakers, you know? Right. Yeah. You know, I wish I could probably pull off a pair of the Jordans. I don't know that I could, but <laughs> maybe with Angie's help, I could. I don't know. Maybe. I, what's the, what is, what is the price point for some of those sneakers? Because I know, like, are, are these especially high-end sneakers and, and apparel? They are fairly high-end. And as some of our listeners might know, Yeezy, is uh, kind of in the crosshairs right now with Kanye and Adidas going at it. But uh, they're definitely a higher end price point, and it is a small selection of uh, sizes and varieties. So it's probably not for your everyday shopper, but I know there's a market out there. I think we all know the sneaker market is pretty insane. So there are definitely buyers out there. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about uh, Angie Granheim, the owner of the store. She had uh, just a lovely attitude um, and, uh, and it just seemed like a, like a re had a, a really cool, really cool vibe to her as well. Yeah. Angie has a big personality. She is quite a character, definitely an exciting new face to see in the downtown business community. She actually grew up in Fargo. So let's not, let's not give this impression that she's not from around here. She was a teenager right, yeah. who grew up in Fargo. She re relocated to Los Angeles. She lived there for about a decade. 
and she immediately gravitated towards the skateboarding culture, which is abundantly clear the moment you walk inside Ninja Skate. And while she lived in LA, she bumped into a lot of famous skaters, new and old. Some of the more recent names would be Nyjah Houston and Sky Brown, who both skated in the most recent Summer Olympics. She worked as an artist when she lived out in LA. She was designing sneakers, skateboards, and surfboards. And, you know, she even wound up becoming acquaintances with Snoop Dogg and painted a board for his grandson, Zion. And she's got she's got the pictures to prove it. She showed me her Instagram. It's right there. You can see it. And uh, if you're ever downtown shopping and you just want to chat, I'd say walk in and ninja skate and ask Angie about her time living in L.A. Because that was just the question we started with. And it just rolled from there. All of a sudden, all these celebrity encounters, painting a skateboard for Snoop Dogg's grandson. But yeah, she wound up coming back to Fargo. She wanted to be closer to her two adult sons. And she wanted to do something, though, to stay connected to escape the skateboarding culture. And within she moved back to Fargo at the beginning of this year. And in less than a year, she wound up opening Ninja Skate. Cool. Uh, I also she also mentioned something about uh, she wanted to also represent women in in skateboarding, which, um, as I understand from from uh, her account, it seems like it's mostly male dominated. And so she's also trying to bring some of that forward, right? Yeah, that's right, Chris. She is trying to do some of that. It's uh, definitely a difficult field to break into for women at first. That's obviously changing nowadays. But, you know, she definitely told us stories of times where she would walk into skate shops and get weird looks or feel like she was being treated differently. So she wanted to open a store that was very friendly to women who wanted to get into skateboarding. I think she said it best. She said, I want anybody who wants to skateboard to be able to come in here and feel feel comfortable. Uh, One thing that we should maybe talk about a little bit, Thomas, is how Ninja Skate fits into this sort of trend that we see in downtown, but uh, throughout Fargo-Moorhead, moving toward boutique retail. Uh, Talk a little bit about that, if you could. Um, Where does it fit? How is it different? How is it kind of the same as some of these other uh, boutique retail shops? You're right, Chris. I think there's definitely a move to these smaller boutique stores. I think how this fits in other stores is that the common element here is that shoppers kind of seem to be looking for some experiential type shopping. They want to go into a store and feel like it's something different rather than just your standard big box store. And I think that's what a lot of these boutiques are doing. And Ninja Skate kind of fits in with that. I mean, you've got Angie behind the counter telling stories about living in LA. The whole store gives you this LA theme the moment you walk inside. And it's it's just really interesting all around to see this move to that boutique shopping. And I think really too, people just want to patronize a local small business that's owned by someone that they know and keeps the money in their community yeah yeah it's interesting because i showed i ended up showing um uh some of the photos from our story to my um my son who's almost eight and um you know he's 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 just sort of sort of starting to figure out things like clothes and sort of that that whole world he's he's sort of kind of figuring it out at this point and i showed it to him and he thought it was really cool um he's sort of interested in skateboarding and he he um you know he just recently bought like some cool shoes and i showed him the store and he was like yeah we should go there and i was like yeah we should we should totally go there it seems like it'd be a fun place to pop in and and say hi Right. And that's exactly it is I think these shops and they're not just downtown, like you said, I mean, they're at the mall, they're in South Fargo, they're everywhere. They are really looking for a place that's a fun place to stop in. I mean, even if you walk out empty handed, I think these stores are really going for making sure that the customers are having a really good experience while they're there. Great. Hey, before we take this out, Thomas, I think we should also cover one thing. Um, so this is the this is the store. We had we had a story about this uh, several months ago uh, about the big uh, Bob Dylan mural outside. Uh, it's the same building, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So she, uh, as I recall, she invited an artist from California to come out and paint that mural out here. Is that right? Yep, that's correct. And that's kind of how this whole story started, really is uh, a colleague of mine, John Lamb, wrote the story about how Jules Muck, who was a friend of Angie's, came out 
and did this huge Bob Dylan mural on the outside of the building. Bob Dylan, while he lived in Fargo, had spent some time in that building. So Angie kind of wanted to pay tribute to that. So uh, she had this connection from back in L.A. with Jules Muck, who goes by Muck Rock. She was kind of on a cross-country art tour during doing mural art. And she came here to Fargo. She put that mural together. And that's sort of the beginning of the artwork in the shop. It's on the outside, but it's also on the inside. I mean, Jules painted the underside of a bunch of decks. She painted the mural inside. And there's a local art flair, too. A uh, boy from Hillsboro painted a really cool picture of Tony Hawk midair in the middle of a trick upside down on his board that's also on the wall. So there's a big art presence in the store. And it starts with the Bob Dylan mural outside. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Thomas. It was great to hear a little bit more about Ninja Skate. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. That's going to do it for this week's episode of the Inforum Business Beat Podcast. Check back next week for a new episode. But in the meantime, visit Inforum.com slash business for all the latest headlines. Inforum is proud to be a part of The Trust Project. To learn more about our ideals and commitment to trustworthy journalism, go to Inforum.com forward slash policies and standards.